Well, like Christy said, I, I'm Spencer Zog. I'm, uh, I grew up in Mount Reed, Utah, uh, up Looper Canyon for just a, until seventh grade, and then I moved to Roy. That's where I went to high school and things like that. So I'm very familiar with, with Utah, and we come back here often for things. So, uh, and I'm a dentist. So I, uh, it's interesting uh, that a dentist would be up here in a business, uh, me speaking to you, but um, I'm a, a dentist who moves around a little bit and starts to think outside the box and kind of an entrepreneur, so to speak. So let's go ahead and start our first slide here. All right, so we'll talk a little bit about the dental business. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Is it the middle one? Uh, and that's what's on the left or the right. Yeah. Okay. There we go. All right. Well, went a little bit too far. There we go. We'll get this figured out. So just a little bit about me. I actually went to Salt Lake Community College. I'm alumni of this. Um, back then, it was called Utah Technical College. But um, I got my surgical technology certificate here. It was a year program. And um, really enjoyed it. I also worked here. And that I uh, I did groundskeeping. So to help me pay for my schooling, I picked weeds and trimmed lawns and stuff like that. So I know this campus pretty well. It's got a lot bigger and it's uh, still very beautiful. Went to University of Utah. Uh, I was thinking medicine. So I, I uh, had the pre-med program. Uh, chemistry also was my major there. And because of my degree, I actually worked at uh, University of Utah Medical Center in the OR. So I was on the trauma team and transplant teams as part of uh, as part of that, and that put me through school. So what better way to to learn if what you want to do by just jumping into a, an entry level uh, thing, a uh, search tech. So anyway, that's how I got there. I went to Weber State University and got my chemistry and micro bachelor's degrees, and then um, I taught for a short stand about a year at Stevens Center of College and created their surgical technology program there. From there, I switched gears. I had taken the MCAT, which is the medical test, and then I went and took the DAT. And, uh, and then I went and got accepted to Southern Illinois University for, for Dallas School. And then after down school, I did a year uh, fellowship in implants. So that's my background and my kind of my degrees. Nothing about business at all. In fact, in down school, there was not a single business class. And then we're thrown into to this. Well, uh, since then, I have my practice, which is uh, Spencer Zog Family and Implant Dentistry. I we created a. A business called MLZ Properties, uh, Zybergraph, Montana Manufacturing and Design, Stillwater Outdoor Solutions, Stillwater Campers. I forgot, forgot the dynamic decor is a business as well. And uh, I'm associated in consult with Big Sky Fabrications uh, in Billings. So I've got a few businesses. Uh, some, some of my ideas have worked, some have not. And I'm sure other speakers have talked to you about those types of things. So you learn a lot when they're when they don't go so well. Um, so I'd really like to just pound in two concepts, share with you two things that really have helped me in my businesses and in, in my current business as dentistry. Dentistry is my, my main business. Um, solving problems whether it's solving problems within an entity that you've already created or creating an entity that you have solved the problem and, and there's a, a product or a service that you can market because of, of solving the problem or perceived problem. And then developing relationship capital. We've, we all talked about capital and how important capital is as far as funds and money and getting things started, but relationship capital and developing relationships are extraordinarily important. And I'll show you that by example in some of these slides I have in stories. Uh, 
let's start with my dental business, my dental practice. Like I said, uh, I own a business of dental practice in Montana. That's what they look like. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, this is our office here. So the first first thing I I come in and I'm a dentist. I, I buy a practice from another dentist who's who's leaving out of the area, and he gives me the key and says, "Good luck." You know, and then I'm I'm in charge of hiring and I'm firing and I'm in charge of all these things. And one of the things I was in charge of is my place of business. The contract that the other dentist had was expiring in just a few months. And so I I was gonna renew that for another couple of years, but they wanted to go month to month and they started raising the rates of my lease of the current dental office. And so the writing was on the wall, I needed to find something else. And so what I did was, I was talking to a couple friends and they had similar situations. And so we got together and we bought a four acre plot of land. And we bought, we built one business or one building and we called it MLZ Properties. And we each took a, a section of it and we, we did our businesses out there. Over time, we were able to uh, build another building, building number two. And what we did is we, we had four, four uh, business opportunities in that building and we sold one, which funded the cost of the building. And so then we leased the other three out and that then gave us the ability to build number three so, and we did the same thing. We sold one of those units, which cash flowed us to make uh, finish that building. And then, then we just finished four and got everybody in. So our whole complex is done. It's been done over a 15 year period. So it wasn't a very fast thing, but methodically and slowly, I, we didn't have to come up with extraordinarily large amounts of capital to do it. We just sold one plot of it and lease the others and that helped fund each of the buildings. So anyway, it's kind of turned out to be a smart thing on our, our end here. Here's the inside of my office. I have six treatment rooms, I have a wonderful staff, but it's, a dentist is really all over the board. They're an entrepreneur, they're a business owner, they're the whole entire human resources department. You hire, you fire. You do all those things, which aren't actually, I don't like doing some of those things, but you have to. Um, you're a psychologist, you're a psychologist for your staff and for, for business, you would be for your, for your employees, but particularly for the patients, you have to understand what they want. And it's not just what they say, it's what they, what they're thinking, you have to understand what they're thinking so that you can provide good services to them, especially in cosmetic. Uh, you really need to get to understand and have them show you pictures and just talk about what they would like to look like. Is it something that they want to look like that they looked like before, or is it something completely different they want to look like? So anyway, a chemist, a microbiologist, a, certainly an artist, a one tooth restoration in the front is the hardest thing you can do in dentistry to match that color. It's just difficult. Electrician, every time a computer goes down, I hear about it. You know, there's an error. I'm the computer guy, I'm the maintenance guy, I'm the safety after. I have to do my own marketing. And that's, uh, and, and then you, you get to get. So I'm going to show you a case. I hope you're not queasy. I'm not showing blood and guts here, but I just want to show you how problem solving in dentistry every day we do problem solving. We're, uh, we're looking at cases and we're looking at things that are wrong with somebody. And how do we make it right? So this is a case that I did. <clears throat> um, broken off teeth, decay, particularly on the lingual. Um, just, just a mess. We've got uh, uh, an occlusion or a bite that's that's completely off. And so what we did is we took 
all the information, put it in a computer, did some CAD CAM and three dimensional stuff, and uh, planned where some implants might go. Place the implants. We did guided guided surgery. I mean, this is this is really interesting and, and fun stuff. So it's extraordinarily precise. And then we come up with with this a before and after shot. I'm going to share with you one more case. Um, I'm going to not show you the blood guts and all this, but there's this young lady. She's a, high, a senior in high school. Just started high school. Just started for the, next, the year, and she. In, in Montana, rodeos are big, and she's a barrel rider, and she uh, got kicked by a horse. Did a lot of that, and so knocked out all uh, front teeth, and put her back together by her senior pitcher. There she is. So we do a lot of problem solving in dentistry. A lot of a lot of that. Now you didn't go to business to become a dentist, I'm sure, but um, but. Opposite, we didn't go to dentistry to become a business, but here we are, we're merging. <laughs> Let's uh so uh we created what's called Stillwater Campers. Um so what's the problem? The problem being that in, in Yellowstone, which is, we have a park entrance in Yellowstone. In Yellowstone, you cannot camp anymore unless you have a hard side camper. And you can't do it in a tent. I guess it's the bears, whatever. So anyway, the problem being, you can't do that. The other problem being, if you want to buy a camper uh, and you have a car, it's how do you tow that? How do you get it around? So we. We decided we'll make some small campers and um, we got looking around and businesses are in existence doing this, but they're 18 to 24 months out for an order. So we decided let's jump in, there's room. So we did. And so we started making uh, these, these campers, the micro campers, they're about 500, 600 pounds, easy to tow behind a Toyota Corolla or you know, your Subaru or whatever. And um, that's the outside of them. This is the inside and the back where you uh, have a little gallery there. So anyway, this is one of those problem things where we perceived a problem and created a business to, to be a solution to that problem. And um, so this was three of us. This is myself my son Colton, and a uh, friend, Dusty. Now Dusty, interesting about Dusty, and Dusty we met, my, my wife and I have met on a, a plane ride as we were going to Orlando, uh, or coming home from Orlando, uh, Florida, from a dental conference. We got talking to him and, and found out that he, he knew a few people that we knew and we sort of connected. We found out he's a neurosurgeon uh, there in one of the bigger uh, hospitals there in Billings. And we got talking about different dental things, what we were learning in dentistry. And he was, he was coming from a neuro conference and we got together and we said, you know what? There's a product in dentistry that would work really well in, in, um, in neurosurgery. And we got talking about it and got really excited. And so we, Next, I think it was the next day or the day after that, he came to my office and I showed him the procedure that we're doing. And to this day, he uses that for, for um, some neurosurgical things. So it was really kind of a great thing, but Dusty is an outdoor thinking kind of guy too. He's an incredible welder and machinist. And so uh, when we got together, we, we got, created a few products and businesses and, and it's it's been really great. So now, again, this is the relationship capital I'm talking about. Very, very simple things, talking to somebody on an airplane. In preparation of this, I, I was looking up some studies and there was, there was one that, that really came out and that said, uh, basically in the summary, it said, relationships that you develop 
even minor relationships uh, can be extraordinarily important uh, down the road. Um, and it's, it's a don't don't minimize the the importance of just even simple relationships that you develop. So anyway, I, I think that's true. And, and I'll show you again and again and again how these relationships helped businesses really blossom. So that was our camper business. This is Zyber Shield. This is a uh, here's here's the problem. Problem being um, COVID nineteen coming. I'm a dentist. Think about this. Um, a dentist is probably the most exposed to the COVID virus than any other profession. Uh, I say that because we have a drill. It spins three hundred thousand RPM and sprays water into the mouth, and then bounces back into your face. And so. By the recommendation when COVID was coming out in 20, 2020, the American Dental Association, the ADA came out with guidelines. And the guidelines were that we have N95 mask and a shield. Well, the problem with that is most of us use loops. They're magnifying glasses with, with a light on it. And the loops stick out from your eyes and magnifies what you're working on. Um, the shields didn't allow for that to continue to take place. The other part of that was there was there's a glare. I mean, it's just no matter how you try to, there's a glare in there. And then the third thing you might not realize is that it's curved low grade plastic, right? Um, and curved plastic, even curved glass, if it was high quality, would give you distortion. We're working in millimeters um, in dentistry. And so this was really disruptive to, to the community. So we came up with an idea. Um, and it was the Zyber Shield. So I uh, re reached out on my relationship capital. We got Dusty involved, we got my, my son Colton involved. And we developed and did prototyping of what we call the Zyber Shield. The Zyber Shield is just uh, something that attaches to the chair, goes over the patient, it has suction to it. So any, anything that comes back, it, instead of the shield being on your face, it's now closer to the patient and capturing all of their things. Well, it, it kind of got big. And um, so we were looking for somebody to manufacture. So there was this company in, in Utah called Pivot. They do exhibits. Now exhibits are for trade shows, right? And trade shows have been shut down. And they were they were shut down and this particular trade show company was um, gonna close their doors, but we reached out to them. They could help us manufacture these. And so there was a relationship there that, that was created. And then we did a patent on it, which was, um, another relationship that we had developed from a lawyer. And so anyway, these uh, these did really well. In fact, uh, Patterson Dental Company, which was the biggest dental company in North America, uh, came and, and wanted to, to have our, our product and sell it. So, um, so anyway, really, really kind of interesting things. Uh, this business was created from a problem and um, it was created very quickly. All of our businesses seem like we don't have much time to create them and get product out there. Um, from the concept of this idea to actual product on the shelf was uh, six weeks. So, and a lot of product. So we, we had to scale it real quickly. We had to learn how to, um, manage things, we had to get a website up, we had to get insurance on these things. Uh, it was just crazy, but it, it worked out just right, quite well. So here's that business. And then um, I want to kind of wrap things up and, and really put tie everything into this next one, which was actually the first one, um, the Montana mask. And what what is the Montana mask? Well, 
Montana Mask um, was, again, the three of us, uh, Dusty Richardson, myself, and my, my son. And um, as, again, the problem being COVID coming into to existence here, and Dusty uh, Richardson working at the hospital um, was getting notifications that he could only one, wear one mask per week. So there was a shortage of masks. And I don't know, he, uh, in surgery, you don't want to wear a mask after a surgical procedure a second time. So he was really bothered by that. And he, he kind of thought about things and, and uh, sketched out on a napkin some, uh, an idea that he had and reached out to Colton and I. And we, um, we talked about, well, how can we do this? We talked about 3D printing. We, we use 3D printing in dentistry all the time. We have, I have three, four 3D printers. And so very familiar with the process. And we decided that would be the best way for us to, to make a mask. So here's the idea. The idea is that we would create a file, a 3D printed STL file. You probably get pretty familiar with some of that. Um, that can be printed by any printer. And then at, at first, the idea was to use existing masks. They were not extinct, they were just low in quantity. So if we could cut up a mask and, and make uh, little patches and determine that we could get somewhere, depending on the mask, six to nine patches, then we could use those in our 3D printed masks for the filter particles. As you know, China makes most of our filter material. In fact, we've learned a lot about independence on other countries, but um, we weren't gonna sit back and, and uh, let this affect us. So what we did was um, sat down. I, I remember this was March 19th of 2020. So we're almost on the anniversary of when all this was happening, two years. Um, Dentistry was then designated as a non-essential business. So I found myself to have some time off, right? They closed us down. The only cases we could do were um, individuals who had a pain threshold of eight out of 10, and we could go do the emergency then. But eight out of 10 is really like, like broken femur type stuff, you know? Um, so it didn't happen very often. Um, and so we were shut down for seven weeks uh, as, as a dentist in Montana, and I think most of the country was somewhere between that as well. So we had time, but I didn't watch an episode of, you know, the whole series of Star Wars from, you know, one to eight or whatever it is now. Um, we just, we just kind of said, what can we do and figure this out? So March, March 19th, Thursday's evening was the idea. The 20th, which was Friday, we decided that 3D printing was going to be our, our method. Um, and so what I did was uh, we used some dental equipment and we, we did some facial scans of my son. Uh, turns out that the contour of the face is really super complicated. And um, so we, we started with that. Colton is a very good 3D modeler. And so he... Uh, he put that in. Well, it turns out that 3D printing is super slow, right? Uh, we put one on, we start it, and three to four hours later, it would finish. And there were times where we were on version three, and version one was still printing, and so we just aborted it because we knew well, that wasn't going to work. And we started version three on there, and, and version five, version seven, and nine. And, and we finally got it and we worked all through the night on, on Saturday and Sunday at 8 a.m. We had the file, the, like the, the perfect file. And so what we did is put that on my demo website. It, it was fast, it's nimble. I could put it on myself. Um, we put it on there and then we scrambled to, to come up with some instructions, how to do it. And, um, 
and my dental site started getting some hits on, on things and downloads. We got, we just didn't put the STL file though. We put the source file on because we figured they're smarter people than us, right? That can make some modifications, that can do some other things. And so we put the source file and the STL on my website with instructions how to how to do this, and it just really started to catch fire. So Monday morning, um, I, I go to my office where we're, this is, Monday morning was kind of our first day that we're gonna be actually closed. And so all my staff actually was there, all my, all my team members, and they were calling our patients to notify them that we can't see them. So we're, we're calling out uh, two weeks ahead, and then, but that Monday, our phone was just ringing off the hook. We just, every single one of us was answering phone calls and taking questions. And, and on my website, it has my email to it. Uh, 13,000 emails later during that week, uh, we decided we needed to uh, really expand and, and help. And, and um, so we just reached out to a, a lot of people to, to help make this happen. So, <clears throat> so here's how the relationship capital came. Uh, let me uh, go through the process. We 3D printed it. It still took three to four hours to print one mask. Right? How, how can that even make a difference? Well, what turned out is that there are enthusiasts throughout the entire world that are 3D printers. And it's very, you can buy a 3D printer even now for under $100 and you can print the mask. And so people were printing this and, and they were um, trying to, you know, make, make things happen as best they could during this hard time. Well, like I said, uh, it got worldwide, 178 countries. Um, this is from Google Analytics. This is actually from Google Analytics. 178 countries and over 5 million downloads and our download button broke. I mean, there are more than that. I do just put greater than, right? Well, we can't handle that. We can't handle that traffic on, on our site. This is crazy. So we reached out to a company called Mindflare here in Utah. They do some hosting and they do computer stuff and they helped us host the website because it kept crashing. In fact, um, quick funny story, we got a call from Germany. I spoke, I spoke pretty good English, but he, he said, well, what do you got against us? I'm like, what do you mean? It's like, well, I can't download the file. It's not downloading. You're just making it for US only. And I'm like, well, no, it's just got a lot of people on there. And I said, try again. And so anyway, uh, and then Billings Clinic, which is the hospital that Dusty works with, he, he reached out to them and they posted on their site. So whatever's on their site is in addition to whatever this site had. And so let me let me show you one day one day's worth of, of uh, statistics. So here's all the countries. This is one day. 111,140 um, people went onto the website. This is just a dental website that you know 30, 40 people a day maybe come to my website and uh, look at all the different countries. I just could only print one page, but 178 countries. So. Um, can I ask a quick clarification? Yes. So they download it and then print it themselves. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. Smart. Yeah. So wherever they were in the country, they could just download it and print it. Well, then let me just get to this next slide here. This is our relationship cap right here. So Billings Clinic. Billings Clinic allowed us to test the mask because there was, it wasn't all positive. You know, people would say, well, it doesn't work because it's plastic. And so we had to test it and prove it and, and um, things like that. So Billings Clinic let us test it. They let us host them on the site. They actually use the mask as well as many other hospitals. So they would reach out to the other hospitals and say, this is what we're doing. And, and so to, to help with, with that, um, we download this. Mind for a program, like I said, there's a, Here's, here's two people out of, one's from Washington, uh, D.C., one's from Texas. 
And they reached out and somebody knew somebody who knew them. And they were phenomenal. And they created this, um, said, they told us we need, a, uh, we need another website to, uh, to also help with getting the mask out there, but also to train how do you how do you put it on, how do you take it off, how do you clean it, how do you put things together? And so they created that website for us and, and became uh, very instrumental in that. They created a community, these community uh, partners um, in every fifth, all 50 states, there was a, there was a go-to person who was in charge of uh, answering questions because you know, first week was 13,000 emails. After that, it was more than I can even answer. So they created these, these people and we started putting emails to them and in their communities and um, it just got big. We got uh, the schools and universities shut, were shut down, but they opened their labs and they, they had, each of them had 20, 30, 50, 3D printers, and that's all they would do. They'd have people come in and just run them 24 seven and, and um, print these masks. But it turns out that we don't even know how many, we think it's hundreds of millions of masks were printed because um, uh, it's just like little raindrops. They don't make a difference, but then they get into these little streams and then they get into these rivers. And so it, it was just really big. Um, our demo office obviously helped through that. Spark R&D, this is a relationship that we created. This, this uh, individual is from Bozeman, Montana. He makes ski bindings. He's an injection molding person and he, uh, he reached out to us and said, 3D printing is great. In fact, here's, here's one, you can pass that around if you want to look at it. 3D printing is great, but let's, speed up the process and let's do, you know, 500 every 30 minutes, you know, and just pump them out even faster than that. They were, they were very capable. They had a hundred employees. They were shut down. They were non-essential. And he said, you know what, if we can just charge $2 a mask, I can pay my employees. So we did. Uh, and then, so he created the, the, the mold. He started injection molding it. And then, then we got to filters. Well, masks were starting to run out. So we, we have this, this uh, place called Highmark Filters. They make uh, filtration for hospitals and things like that. So they, they started to pivot their uh, things and, and start making filters exactly for that mask. And so they, they had to call all their employees back. They were uh, incredibly um busy they they uh made millions of dollars on it by selling theirs we didn't uh this wasn't a purpose of selling anything for us it was just solving a problem and, and um going forward the montana dental association bought um at the two dollar uh, value so that we could just pay him for his employees, uh, they bought every dentist and every dental employee in Montana the mask so they can continue to work. And then um, uh, Montana Silversmiths, they, they are a company of jewelry, right? How did, well, they had contacts and they had uh, suppliers that, that uh, turns out that they had Op options to, for filters and filter material as well. So they they got involved and, and it was just everybody, all the relationships that we, we created through that was, was just invaluable. So um, again, it's uh, it, even the slightest relationships that you may think are insignificant or can be very significant down the road. I have a friend who, who says, uh, However, in order to make a uh, withdrawal, like, like in a bank, you need to make a deposit. And so it is with relationships. Uh, you have to, what can, what can I do or what, how can I help this individual? So maybe down the road they can, they can help me. And uh, anyway, this is the final mask.
that we had created. Uh, that one's injection molded and very soft and, and uh, does very, very well in, in testing and things like that. So anyway, that was, uh, that was really, it wasn't a business. I got back to my practice after the seven weeks and everybody was, you know, there's a lot of news articles and interviews and things like that that we had done. But um, they're like, we were surprised you came back for dentistry. And I said, well, why do you say that? Well, aren't you a millionaire now? <laughs> I said, no, in fact, it cost me several thousand dollars for the entire time that we had done that. They, they figured that we were making money on things. Where does that the truth be known? We, we just were doing things. But it was a great exercise in, in, um, in business where you've got an idea, you had to expand quickly, you have to create partners and get distribution going. You have to really think all of these, all the different aspects out. And it was just an invaluable experience for us for our other businesses that we had since created. So anyway, that's uh, that's all I have. So, and I do have a mask for you. They're brand new, they're in a thing. And <laughs> so afterwards, just come grab them. There's, there's larges and there's smalls. So, so questions, what do you, what do you have questions about? Yeah. So what did you charge in the beginning for the downloads and what did you end up charging? Very good. So the downloads are free and the uh, source file is free and we patented it. That seems really super stupid, doesn't it? To patent something that you gave a free file for. It turns out that it was very important because we were able to shut down some of the scalpers who were charging $100 per mask for things on things like eBay or Amazon or things like that. So it, it was important to protect it in, in order to make it free. Does that, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I actually have a couple of questions. Um, I lived in Bozeman for two and a half years. Okay. Bozeman? Um, yeah. Uh, so, did you say you were uh, primarily based in Billings? Yes, Billings. But you made connections in, in Bozeman. Bozeman. That's well. Awesome. Spartan R and D, and they uh, they're very they're amazing company, but they they were shut down, and this allowed them to continue to work through the whole time. Sounds good. Um, and then. Another question is, uh, do you believe that your success as a dentist was the source of your success uh, at creation and in your other businesses? Good question. Uh, I think I think that is probably a true statement, that, that my first business, my my primary business, if that doesn't go well, right. it will reflect on everything else I do. So absolutely. And the concepts that I learned there, obviously, are, are used in other businesses. My uh, last question was, uh, can I get a discount on your still large campers? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a coupon floating around there. So. Um, yes. I was just curious, like, you developed so many different ideas. Do you have ideas of what you want to do next? Oh, like you have plans for the future. Right. So, so that's a great question. Um, I have a book, and it starts back when I was a uh, brand new in college. I'd, I'd listen to concepts and then um, and then I write them down uh, during class. I mean, it was, it may not even have anything to do with what we were talking about, but something would pop in, so I just write it down. And um, so, yeah, I, I've got a book of, of different ideas and things that I want to do. Cool. Yeah. Else? yeah. Will you ever end up writing a book? Well, that's a good question. I haven't considered it. It, it, we uh, we've been through some funny, crazy things. Our, our dental school experience was worthy of a book itself. <laughs> the five years that we were, six years that we were there. So, but, um, yeah, I might. Did you ever do a question? Yeah. So, did you end up charging anything for your masks at all? Because I know you said that the filters were something or two dollars per mask. Okay, so so the the actual printed mask was a free file downloaded millions of times. I'm sure even people share it uh, beyond that. Um, 
when we switched over to the injection molded masks, we didn't pay for them. We would we would contact like people would say we want these masks, and we'd say we can give you five hundred. They're charging they Spark R and D is charging two dollars a piece. Is that okay? And then they write the check to Spark R and D. So we kept completely out of the financial loop of things, right? So. To be clear, we made zero dollars on it, <laughs> and in fact, uh, probably spent four, five, six thousand dollars of our own money just to get it going. Can you explain to them why it's maybe important to have businesses that you don't necessarily profit from? Okay. Well, this is a great example. I mean, just going through all of the different steps that we had to really solidified what we need to do as a business. We, we were able to, so just, just the exercise of going through, creating the business, uh, upscaling quickly, uh, getting, just getting the patent and things like that really set us up for, for great things. Um, every mistake that we make, we learn way more from the mistakes than we do from the good stuff. Every single mistake, we're like, all right, we're never doing that again. You know, we're we're gonna. So that that's where you really learn is by right, mistakes. And so, um, my companies that I make, some some of them have been successful, some have not. Uh, it's not that we haven't put the same amount of energy in it or the marketing or that it was a bad idea. It's just just didn't. Some of them just didn't take off, and so. That's, that's what happens. Now, what were some of your unsuccessful companies? Because it seems like the ones you showcased in this class have all been built. So, yeah, so we always show our best stuff, right? <laughs> Where's our bad stuff? Where's our bad stuff? Well, um, I, we had created a, a thing and an idea of called Zaber Zinc, Z A B E R Z Y B E R Zinc. It was a uh, uh, way to uh, anti rust your car. I was in Utah when this happened, and and you know we th we throw ice melt on during the and it's really hard on, on the cars, particularly in the coastal areas where there's there's sea water and things like that. So I, I learned the concept in chemistry, and we talked about cathodes, anodes, and and where oxidation takes place. And I and I learned that they use them on bridges and and uh, boats. To help them anti-rust. And so I thought we could adapt that to cars. And I created something that adapts it to cars, but it just didn't take it off. So there's one. So go ahead and take it. <laughs> go. <laughs> go with it. Oh, yeah. Um, so it looks like most of your businesses are based in Montana. Is that yes. because you currently live in Montana? I am I am from Billings, Montana, and that's where we live. And uh, if I should have taken a picture of, of my shop, um, it's it's significant. I dabble in a lot of things. Um, I do electroplating and anodizing. I do. Um, I have a Haas mill, which is a vertical mill. It's a thirty horsepower machine mill. I have two um, CNC wood cutters. Um, we have, like I said, 3D printers, we have lasers, we have all kinds of things. So I, I love dentistry, but when I get done with dentistry, I, I go on my shop and we, we do other things. You can basically make a doctor anything you want. I, I, I can wait real close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. Appreciate it.